Namaste. Kneeling back bends are the most strengthening of the categories of asanas. I am not inherently flexible. And then back bend took me really a while to learn. So for me, this is a position of strength and power, you know, stability in the hips. And of course, the breath plays an important role. So for today, let me share with you a few insights on two you know, strong and advanced kneeling back bends, the Kaputasana and the Ekapada Kaputasana. Now maybe Strasana to initiate yeah, the opening of the spine. So we start with that Ustrasana. All right. So in kneeling back bends, if it's symmetrical, start with your knees narrow. The reason being, as the spine folds to the back, you know, suspends to the back, inevitably your hips will have to move forward. Therefore, the knees will have their way of adjusting wider. Yeah. To set it up, so knees narrow, so later on, they will just open yeah, involuntarily and then you are not opening too wide. Otherwise, if the knees to begin with are wide and then the tailbone will scoop and there's an effect of your spine curling backwards, there's a huge probability of the sacrum to scoop further under and that will result in tightness of the low back. Instead of going to an extension, you're actually going and then moving into a flexion. So knees are narrow, important. Okay, now inhale, and then you might move your knees a bit of a side to side. And as you stretch the side trunk. All right, this is provided you've run already, yeah? Okay, so let me angle. And then from here, knees narrow, and your feet, yeah, probably a bit, maybe wider, or keep them narrow as well. Okay, so the breath. Yeah, start with the vertical. You may lightly tip the hips back just for you to create a little bit of that momentum, breathing in. And then you don't initiate by pushing the pelvis forward, rather lift the body to the vertical. All right, and then the arm bones will move forward because later on, your shoulder blades will scoop under to cushion your spine and lifting up. Yeah, so you might keep your hands to your chest. All right, so let's repeat the process. Tip, breathing in, and exhale to the chest. All right, as you inhale, push down, tail back a bit, yeah, and that will encourage more stability in the hips, and let the body hang loose. All right, in here, you will feel like there's a point in um, the bottom of the ribs, between the ribs there, will support you like a bind. You yeah, may use your toes, see? Maybe I'm using my toes to stabilize the hips, but not too much. And here, you settle. Okay, you can just keep your body hanging, or yeah, you can rise up a bit, so you can do your Ustrasa. All right, your kneeling one. All right. And then here, you breathe as you inhale. Yeah, down with the knees, forward the spine, and the upper back suspends behind you. Good. You might adjust your hands yeah, closer, yeah, depending on the sensation inside. Good. And rise up. Good. And then you can walk your knees in place, and then you can also move the shoulders side to side. Well, so you might begin with that yeah, until such time that you can stabilize the hips without you collapsing the pelvis, yeah? So you have to keep your hips somehow upright, so you're drawing it from the hips and the muscles open. And this is, the spine will just naturally curl backwards because of your bracing, hugging the midline, the bandas, yeah? Okay, now progressing that to, yeah, I find the asymmetrical lighter for me. Yeah, because in here, I'm using my front leg yeah, to create that adjustment. All right. The Ekapada Kaputasana. Okay, let me adjust. Okay, now. The Ekapada Kaputasana. Yeah. So you start hip width and you step that foot forward. Good. And then keep that leg yeah, somehow about sh uh, hip width distance. Or maybe just a fraction wider, but not too wide. Okay. Important. Yeah. That leg is drawing inward, and this leg is, or this thigh is moving inward, to, like you're moving them back to the central axis. Yeah, breathing in, you do that. Inhale, yeah, stable. Exhale, suspend. 
So this is a breath pattern. Inhale, hug the midline, and exhale. So you're using you know, the hips to cushion your spine. Inhale, midline, yeah, like you are moving everything towards the center, and exhale, hang backwards. Good. And in here, you will feel that point again, loosen, or I try to move your arms, you might wave them around. Yeah, I do this too. Good. You don't fight the arms, armpits forward, you're in and up. Okay, and then we do the process, hug the midline, let the arms relax, Good. and then you're reaching for the heel behind you. Okay, in here, you might feel you have some more spaces yeah, you can open inside that hip. So what you do is to bend that you know, free leg and then press slightly to that foot and then lifting this knee so you can adjust it forward. And that will make room for the spine opening further and stretch the leg again. All right, inhaling at the top of it, let the elbows touch the ground. All right, so this is really a position of strength. You will feel your thighs burning and then here roll in and out of the knee and the shoulder and stay all right to come up inhaling hug the midline one hand at a time press adjusting that leg all right loosen and then press with the hands so you can further the opening of this side wow strong yeah burning here yeah the spine actually, yeah, you can feel the stretch, but it's more of the hip flexor and the thigh supporting you. And from here, inhaling, come back with control as the entry, and your hips back. Good, you can feel the quadricep, all the way to your hips. And the spine, no. You, um, the spine, of course, is stretching, but there's no discomfort in the spine. It's more on the foundation, your hip flexor and the thigh. All right, and then after that asymmetrical strengthening back bends, you might do symmetrical. Good, Kapotasana. Okay, in the Kapotasana, same as the entry of the Ushrasana. Narrow. Okay, let me angle this way. Good. Breathing in, push down. Hips, inhaling. Vertical, adjusting. And exhale. Okay, breathing in, down, tail back a bit. Yeah, so you don't initiate by pushing forward. Yeah, your hips will just move forward later on when the spine is ready to curl backwards. Yeah, the entry, vertical, a mild tip of the tail, and lift upwards. Exhale. Good. Breathing in, yeah, hugging to midline. I know it's, yeah, quite difficult to accomplish, yeah, if you're learning, but think about, you don't want to be collapsing the pelvis, so keep them into the midline. Push down, use your toes, see? Nah. To keep your hips stable and hang backwards. Good. And then keep adjusting. You may move the shoulders to side to side. And then here, notice my hips just move forward because my spine is ready to curl back already. And of course, here, you loosen the shoulders. You may hang. Yeah. Good. And then here, suspend. Yeah. Shoulders soft. And you're reaching hold of those heels. And then as well here, you adjust, you're walking your knees to the midline, one at a time, and at the same time, scooping your, sh your spine forward and upwards. Yeah. And then the arm bones here are externally rotating, so the shoulder blades can scoop the spine from the underneath and down. So the breath pattern here is inhale, at the top of the bra, a Malcolm Baka, exhale to the ground. And just breathe normally as you hold the position. Good, and to come up, breathing in, exhale, yeah, hands to ground. And then here, adjusting again, knees narrow. Good, inhaling, good, return, the same. As the entry, you're just reversing the motion. And then hips, knees adjust to the middle. 
and walk in place. Good. And then you may do a flow. So I normally would do from here, yeah, a downward dog will alternate, three-legged dog, and this three-legged dog transition allows my hips to recover a bit. Good. And then forward, you can do your vinyasa if you're doing a vinyasa, or you can <coughs> recover in this circling around. Okay, so let's do the other side. <coughs> Good. So let me angle this way now. Uh, so you can see both legs clearly. All right, knee. You can also learn this with the other knee bent. Yeah, so this is probably more helpful if you are just starting with the practice. So you have that support as well, because if the leg is straightforward, there's less stability. So you may start with knees the end. All right. You can lift the knee. This is my hollow side, so I need to adjust a little bit here. All right, <laughs> same. Like you're doing a one kneeling Ustrasana. Right. Hug to midline, see? Grip, inhaling, midline, and that will stabilize the hips. Exhale, loosen, inhale. Exhale, soften, inhaling, exhaling. Okay, in here, I can already loosen this leg. We are breathing in, hugging to midline. See, my foot is sliding backwards to make room for my hips, stabilizing my spine. And here, I can rest my hand. The moment your hands are on the heels, you can relax and then loosen the hugging technique. Here you can adjust shoulders, you can even walk the knee. Good. And before you descend, inhaling. Good. If the readiness is there, go as deep I can as your calf. Good. Then to come up, um, you may shorten this leg. Inhale one hand at a time. Good. Adjusting the bottom leg and then rubbing around yeah, the sockets of the hips. Good. Same as the entry. Inhaling and with control, come back and down to your kneeling. You notice how my mat moved because I'm using really the grip yeah, and the stability of my foundation. Yeah, to open the spine. And Kaputasana again. That's my sequence actually. All right, narrow. Exhale. Inhale, vertical. Right. Inhale, push down. You can use your toes. Yeah. Exhaling. Inhaling. In here, the hugging to midline our action is initiated by your toes. Yeah? Exhale, loosen, inhale, and soften. Yeah. So the arms play uh, just a minor role here. It's really the inner body. Uh, you can hang loosely there before you reach for the heels. Good, and adjust again. Again, once the hands are resting on your heels, you can loosen a bit of that hugging. So you can gain access inside your core. Good, and breathe. Exhaling, loosen a bit, inhaling, and soften. All right, come up, inhale. You can press down. So you can reposition and adjust. Right. Walking to knee, not the midline, and rubbing the tongue around the mouth. All right, breathing in, and same control as the initiation of the position, and then back to the center. Good, and then you can flow again. You might lie on your tummy, 
or to the floor. Good. I suggest this alternate three legged dog, really is helpful for relaxing the hips after your deep back bends. So, yes. Externally, back bends is predominantly flexibility. Yes, it's flexibility, but the internal dynamics is built up yeah, from strength and stability, and of course, the breath. Yeah. So at the, end, at the end of the day, it's just practice, really. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah, everyone's body is different, so you might be more on the flexible side. So if you are on the more flexible side, you're lucky you have to have the gift. Now work on your strength, because the body can just handle much. Yeah, if you're on the strength side and lacking the flexibility, <laughs> flexibility like I do, then it might take a while. It might take a long time, but yeah, it's very possible. Yeah, I'll see you in the next lesson and have a safe, meaningful one. Namaste.